Hello, it's Zeke Freak again. Today I'm here to talk about my thoughts on the new uh, Shaman King anime. Some may call it a remake. I don't because it's a, a more faithful adaptation than the original one in 2001. So I'm not comfortable calling it a remake, but some people would call it that because I wouldn't because it's not attempting to remake the 2001 show it's attempting to make the uh, the manga or not remake but adapt the manga faithfully this time uh, for people who don't know the 2001 anime uh, follows the manga pretty closely up to about episode 20 to 25 ish somewhere in there about when they arrive at America um, and then it divert it starts diverging quite heavily taking in loose ideas from the manga that was running at the time but not really fully adapting it in any traditional sense and by the ending it just goes in a completely different direction uh, but this this new anime purports to be uh, very faithful to the manga and we'll see the actual ending uh, actually animated for the first time which is pretty nice this is a this is a second chance I didn't think Shaman King would ever get and I'm very happy that it's happening uh, I do want to explain the difference in my perspective, however, because um, a lot of people, unlike a lot of people, a lot of people seem to be coming at this kind of like the situation with FMA 2003 and FMA Brotherhood, where a lot of people who watch the first series are coming into the new series. Uh, I'm not one of those people. I have seen I have seen the 2001 Shaman King adaptation, but my first experience with it and my primary experience with it has always been the manga. Uh, which is one of the handful of manga that first got me into manga um, way back way back when I think around I don't even remember probably around 2006 maybe um, so yeah I've been a fan of Shaman King for a very long time and but my perspective on it is different because I don't have this reverence for the 2001 series I didn't watch it on Fox Kids or whatever the fuck it was on as a as a child. So uh, I know that's a lot of people's experience, but that's not my experience. I've always had a distaste for the 2001 series for its uh, deviations from the source material. So that's just where I'm coming from. So the fact that the new anime is going to be more faithful is something I'm very excited about. And yes, I am caught up. By the way, as of this recording, there's been seven episodes, I think, uh, and I've seen them all. Uh, the last one was the Faust the Eighth fight, and so the big the big talking point about this adaptation is it's going it's is it's uh, very compressed nature because they are attempting to cram 300 potentially more if they touch on anything from Shaman King Zero or uh, especially I'm really hoping they adapt Mappa Daoji um, because I think I have no idea. I still don't understand why Mappa Daji is not part of the actual series. It's like a weird one-shot, but like it is kind of essential for understanding the main villain's motivations, so I really hope they adapt the Mappa Daji one-shot in the show. But anyway, so they're basically trying to cram 300 chapters of manga into about into 52 episodes. It's a 52-episode run, which is actually shorter than the 2001 anime, which ran for 64 64 65 I believe um, so that's at, at first glance it's really alarming that they're trying to cram that much into it um, and I was extremely apprehensive about that until uh, somebody on the Shaman King subreddit made a post detailing how they could get to uh, or, uh, Osore's Isore Reservoir Osore San Reservoir I think is is what it is um which is about the halfway point of the series it's a big emotional flashback arc but it's like the halfway point of the series how they could get there in 26 episodes and i read his explanation of how they could do that and how they'll probably actually end up doing that and i didn't think it sounded too bad like yes obviously it's moving very very fast and skipping a lot of the early material because they just have to go from beat to beat to beat to beat and watching the show it does kind of play out that way um, some things happen very fast and some things don't have the breathing room that I would have liked them to have 
but I gotta say though, I'm not I'm not really with the negativity crowd on this one. I think it's just because I have this different perspective. Like, I wrote off this even happening as a possibility a long time ago, so the fact that it actually is happening is just something I'm very grateful for. And the manga's always going to be there. I wasn't looking for something to necessarily to supplant the manga. So, I realize that's what... That's what a lot of people want out of an anime adaptation, is they want, like, a definitive version of the of the story, of the experience. Uh, but I don't necessarily think not being definitive is the same as being bad. I think having this kind of supplemental, almost for the fans style adaptation is not a bad thing. Um, because if you've read the manga before, you can fill in a lot of the gaps yourself, which is nice. Obviously, it's not the most ideal for newcomers, but I think it's still good. I think they just have to have that that foreknowledge in mind that it is going to be a somewhat compressed adaptation. So they got they got to buckle in, they got to strap in their seatbelts because uh, shit's gonna move pretty fast. And I understand that like there are legitimate like pacing concerns and you know. Like, I can make all the excuses I want, but that, you know, the product is what it is. And I, I get that, but at the same time, I'm pretty comfortable... I've come to accept the idea that this is not going to be the ideal adaptation. I always said that, like, two-year run, a hundred episodes or so, would have been perfect to adapt this series. We got half that, so, you know, definitely not ideal. But I think they can make it work if they're really smart about what they choose to prioritize and how they use their time. We've already seen in a few episodes that they've just outright skipped the ending credits, which the ending theme's really good, by the way, but they've outright skipped the ending credits to sh shove more time in there. I kind of wish the show didn't even have an opening. Uh, it could do like the Shin Sakayori thing where it just doesn't have an opening. That would have been probably a lot better because you, you can get like an extra three minutes out of every episode if you don't have an opening or ending, but I guess, especially since they're marketing this to... Uh, uh, younger demographic on a, on a main television network like TV Tokyo. I guess they kind of gotta have most of the time an opening and ending, which is unfortunate because they could save a lot of time by not having that. But yeah, so I mean, like, and obviously we're only seven episodes in. This early material is the kind of the stuff I'm the least interested in because it's actually very easy to see how they could, how they have adapted that by mostly cutting a lot of the fluff. The early Shaman King chapters had a lot of fluff chapters that didn't really contribute much to the overall storyline, so I'm not too upset to see those go. There's a little, there's a few, there's a few moments I'm upset to see go, like the Amida Maru shaved ice thing that everyone loves, um, like little stuff like that, little little character building things like that are missing here that would have been appreciated, but they just don't have the time to do that, so. And obviously, like, I could come back here in a year from now and tell you how they completely botched it and they didn't know what they were doing and they prioritized all the wrong things. That's very possible. I admit, I could be making a sequel to this video where I shit all over this adaptation. But right now, it seems like there's a lot of passion behind it and uh, they've been mostly pretty good at uh, prioritizing what needs, to, what needs to be there and what doesn't need to be there. Um, honestly, from my perspective, it's just kind of a fascinating initiative. Uh, it might be the most ambitious anime adaptation um, we've seen in a long time, maybe ever, just for the sheer amount of compression that they're going to have to do and still make it like a, a comprehensible, a cohesive product that people, newcomers and fans alike, will appreciate and can follow. That's not an easy task, I don't envy them. Uh, I read an I, I did read an interview from I forget who exactly they were interviewing someone uh, in the staff where they said they they talked they were they had a lot of meetings with Take the author Hiroyuki, uh, Hiroyuki Take sorry and um, they they came to this agreement on the 52 episode deal and they have they have thought long and hard about what needs to be there and what doesn't need to be there and what they need to focus on. Uh, because the thing is, if you just put it in your calculator and you're like, okay, what? how does 300 chapters convert to 52 episodes? 
you'll get an average of, I think, about 5.6 chapters per episode, which is pretty fast. But you have to keep in mind that not all chapters are created equal. Some are very action-heavy, and uh, the thing about action in manga is that you can adapt it to animation very quickly. What might take 10 pages of action in, a, in manga might only be like 10 seconds of action in animation. So that's something to keep in mind as well, is that um, there's a lot of time that can be saved there for chapters that are more action heavy. And they also talked about how, depending on the importance of the events going on, some things will be skimmed through and some things will be given time to breathe. Um, you know, you might have the odd episode here and there that adapts, well, quote unquote adapts, or maybe skips a few here and there or trims down, you know, covers, let's say it covers like nine, nine chapters in one episode, which is insane. But if you prioritize the right things, it can kind of work. But other episodes might only adapt like three or four because they need to slow down and have make sure that those scenes have the impact they need to. Uh, and just that, just the fact that they've confirmed that they put a lot of thought into it and they've spoken with Take about it uh, makes me pretty, pretty confident that the adaptation will end up being something I can at least look on as favorable. Something like, like again, I don't think it's going to replace the manga, which is what a lot of people want and consider to be ideal for an adaptation. But I do think that it will. Uh, It'll be a nice supplement to the manga and a decent experience for newcomers. Um, after all these years, it's just nice to see it animated with the voice acting and the music um, and whatnot. And I think that, um, you know, from my perspective as a longtime fan who's read the manga multiple times, just getting to see the, the greatest hits of Shaman King in animated form like this is kind of a treat in itself. So while it might not be the most ideal, uh, I do, I am at the moment pretty happy with it. It could turn to shit very easily, but right now I'm pretty happy with it. And there's also a lot of people complaining about the animation quality itself, and I'll admit it's not like high qual, it's not like high tier or anything. It's Studio Bridge, you know, this is kind of their thing. They make, they make uh, long running, um, uh, shows for the, the family demographic and whatnot and they, they don't always have the highest quality animation uh, I'm not too bothered by it though and I don't the big thing is I don't get the argument that the 2001 series was better the 2001 series had some impressive shots and it definitely had um, a little more character acting on the whole moment to moment but at the same time the art was so inconsistent and very divergent from Take's designs. The bridge anime, the 2021 anime, is sticking very closely adhering to Take's designs. If you look at the character sheets, they basically just transplanted the colored illustrations from the uh, KZB editions uh, right into the anime's uh, model sheets. So it's very accurate to Take's manga. So if the art quality, if the art quality is vastly improved, and the animation quality is only very slightly diminished, then, like, I think that's a fair trade-off. I think you get you have a better-looking show overall. And I'm sure they're going to save um, the animation budget. That's not how animation works. But the animation budget for the scenes that really need it. I think so far we haven't had the big important moments or the big important fights that would, like, necess that would necessitate a lot of focus on the quality of the animation. I'm sure when we get to those parts that it'll probably be there uh, because there does seem to be a lot of passion behind this project. You know, at first I was very apprehensive about the idea of cramming 300 chapters into 52 episodes and I'm still apprehensive about it. I still don't think I'm still upset that this is what they chose to go with. Again, I think a two year run would have been perfect, but the industry being what it is right now they even mocking not mockingly they even jokingly say that in one of the interviews where they're like if you think about the current state of the industry 52 episodes is actually a lot and i'm like yeah i guess it is that's that's kind of that's that's kind of indicative of the sad state of 
the of the anime industry right now, but I guess, I guess I can't argue with that. It is kind of a lot, but I wish it didn't have to be that way. If anything, I kind of wish that this uh, this reboot, as it would, as it will, if you will, uh, would have waited even longer until maybe years from now when the industry sorts itself out a little bit. Uh, I'm not seeing any light at the end of that tunnel, just given how the system is so um, is set up right now, and it's, it's been so draconian and so hard to change. So I'm not seeing any light at the end of the tunnel on that one. But I would have. I guess I would have liked if they waited even longer until um, the industry had sorted itself out for this kind of ambitious project. But we don't always get what we want. So, um, but as it stands, I'm enjoying the new anime quite a lot, and I hope I continue to enjoy it. I hope they don't piss me off too much by not prioritizing the right things or just. I don't know. Once we get into the real meat of the material, maybe the uh, maybe the faster pace will start to annoy me more. Because uh, the thing is, I, I kind of feel like Shaman King doesn't hit its stride until a little later. I like the early, I like the early material. Don't get me wrong, but there's a lot of fat to be cut, and it's not the most engaging parts of the series. So the fact that they're skimming through it doesn't bother me too much. But maybe later, when they hit the material I'm more attached to, that it actually will start to bother me more. I don't know. I might do a video after it ends uh, talking about how I feel about it. But yeah, that's it. I just wanted to make this video talking about my thoughts on the new Shaman King anime. Uh, I hope it turns out well. Yeah, I think it's going okay so far. It's had some. It's had a lot. It's had some ups. It's had a little. It's had a few downs. A few things I was disappointed by, but like nothing damning yet. I think there's a lot of negativity in the fandom right now, and. Uh, I, I, I just don't get it personally, so yeah. Uh, I'm just happy Shaman King's back and it can be exposed to more people once it finally leaves Netflix jail. Of course, if you're a, if you're a based Chad, you know where to get it anyway. But um, yeah, that's about it. That's all my thoughts. Zeke Freak out. Ciao, ciao for now.